outside now, going in the roof. because all the boaters you can see during the guided tour are real boaters. To begin with the words about the founder of the sailors, Eugène Mercier. Uh, Eugène Mercier was born here in Epernay in 1838. Uh, at the time his resources were quite modest, uh, but he was well armed with ambition. So in, 18, in 1858, he decided to create the Union des Propriétaires, uh, that is to say that he became the written sailor of a multitude of wine nations. For Eugène Mercier, at the time, to produce is to have big sailors with stocking and expedition facilities, as you can see just here. In 1869, he decided to buy this site, and in 1871, it was the beginning of a small empire, at the beginning of the excavation of these villas. About 125,000 cubic meters of chalk uh, was extracted uh, using just picks and pickages and by hand. Uh, you have to imagine that at the time there were no machines and there was no, no electricity. Uh, light was provided only by little torches. And after all this chalk was sold to the industry, uh, to give you an idea, the weight of this chalk, which was extracted of these areas, is the equivalent of about 40 times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. Very important. Eugène Mercier was the servant of communication. So during the World Exhibition in 1900 in Paris, he decided to propose three projects to promote his champagne. And the first one was the creation of the captive balloon with the name of Mercier and with champagne testing on board. 
and the second one was the creation of the first commercial thanks to the Lumia brothers and uh, the last one was the creation of a statue called Miss Mercier and uh, we are going to see Miss Mercier later during the guided tour. Uh, the statue you can see just in front of you uh, represents Bacchus, the wine god. Uh, it was the first statue we found here in the Champagne region. Uh, of course it's not the original. The first one you can see here is dedicated to the French President Sadi Carnot. As you can see in the middle, Sadi Carnot, President of the Republic, visit the Cave. The French President Sadi Carnot visited the theaters in 1891. A guided tour by host and carriage of the chocolate sellers was made to the French President. Always on this side, we can see another logo leaf which represents a harvest scene. So we are in the Champagne region. It's the only region in the world where we can produce a wine called Champagne. In the other countries, we can find sparkling wine or metal de Champenoise. Uh, the appellation Champagne became a Naosé, that is to say a controlled appellation in 1935. And nowadays, uh, this appellation extends on 30,000 hectares. Here, Merci Champagne is about 240 hectares, which extend on 19 cru. Uh, be careful, a cru is not the production of a vineyard, as you can see in other regions in France. Here in the Champagne region, a cru means uh, the production of one village, it's a typical source. Uh, we work with three different grape varieties, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay and all begins with the harvest. Uh, the harvest is made by hand and normally in September. All the berries are likely pressed to obtain the must. Uh, this must are put in big stainless steel vats for the human fermentations. But the first one is the alcoholic fermentation, which is the transformation of sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And the second one is called malolactic fermentation. Um, that is to say that we have to control uh, the acidity of the wine. Once these two fermentations finished, we obtain a non-effervescent wine called in French vin tranquille. And after, it's time for blending. Uh, blending is the work of our Thela master, Christophe Bonnefou, who harmonized uh, the different grape varieties, the different cru, but also the different years, to reproduce Mercier style. And we can define Mercier style in four words of fresh, fruity, Intense and spontaneous. Along with the gallery, uh, you can see some machines. They are the Giro Palette for riddling to turn the boaters. I'm going to talk about the Giro Palette later during the tour. Blending was made in oak barrels, uh, but each barrel gave a different taste to the wine. Uh, to prevent this phenomenon, Eugène Mercier decided to build a huge barrel with one single test. And this huge barrel with the food we have seen the, at the visitor center, it has a content of about 200,000 bottles. And it was of course the pride of Eugène Mercier during the World Exhibition in 1989 in Paris. So we have to turn the motors at interval so as to concentrate all the sediment, all the deposit on the neck of the motors. Uh, the aim is to clarify the wine. I present you Miss Mercier. Uh, Miss Mercier, the statue Jean Mercier decided to exhibit during the World Exhibition in 1900 in Paris. Um, unfortunately, uh, Miss Mercier provoked the pearl. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that if you dressed. And what is more, she has a glass of champagne in one hand and a bottle of champagne in the other hand. And a woman who drank alcohol at that time, it was very scandalous. So people were indignant. As far as Jean Mercier was very disappointed, uh, that we decided to hide Miss Mercier here inside these cellars. As you can see, the only one to have a name here, Galerie de Pekin. more than one kilometer long. Uh, if you turn back, you can see that we don't see the end of this gallery. And the 
workers too at the time didn't see the end. Uh, La Reverse said that if they continued to dig, they would see the end of the world. And the end of the world for them at that time was China, hence the name of Galerie de Pekka. And this is so very, very important because we can see a lot of low leaves. The first one represents Don Pierre Perignon, right in the middle. Don Pierre Perignon, the father of the champagne, as we say here, he was a Benedictine monk. Uh, very important because he was the first to explain and master uh, the second alcoholic fermentation. And it was a sort of initiative of two great waves. Um, the first one was to import from England a glass very thick, uh, because at the time the glass of the borders was too fine, and the borders exploded in the sailors under the pressure. And people said that champagne was devil wine. The second brain wave uh, was to use cork as material to avoid wine separation. We keep manually riddling, that's why we can see all those riddling rights here. Uh, manually riddling is a know how we want to preserve in these cellars. Manually riddling lasts about six weeks and only 12 days for the automatic riddling. So it, it's very cold in this gallery and it's normal. It's just because um, the, the sailors of Mercy are just under the hill of Mont Bernot, and in some galleries like this one, uh, we have several accesses on the outside. Uh, we have an access on the outside just here, and that's why we are at the same level of the railroad. Uh, the railroad has a direct access inside this gallery. Uh, it permits for the Orient Express, for the train Orient Express to come here, and for its passengers to go for the receptions inside the Carvobacus. And this is still the case now. Nowadays, the Orient Express comes during the evening for the receptions. Eugène Mercier chose this site for two reasons. So firstly, uh, because we are just under the hill of Montbernot, and secondly, because the paris Strasbourg railroad uh, was built few years before. And thanks to the railroad transportations, uh, cost will be considerably reduced. And Eugène Mercier could dispatch all these borders in record time all around the world. Well, we've just come out of the champagne cellar, and I'm standing in front of the enormous container that, that they pulled all the champagne in. They had 20 oxen pulled this. It's huge. Imagine that, full of champagne. It must have weighed so much. I suppose that's why they had 20 oxen. Very decorative, isn't it? really well carved. 